poor little town has been hurting with traffic lately. Traffic has been unreal. This is actually Highway 211. It heads south uh, in the Eagle Creek, which you can then access um, oh, Estacada and then down into Malala and Camby, smaller communities. Tonight is uh, open practice at the motocross track. I do not participate. Uh, but I do like to go observe and hang out with some other people. I'll give you guys a shot at the uh, entrance of Motocross Park and maybe I'll attach some footage to the end of some guys racing. Mountain View MX Park. guys just leaving the track here out at Mountain View Motocross Park in Sandy, Oregon. I actually watched uh, Mr. Nest Up Productions do some track practice and just hanging out with the guys. And now we're going to go just take a quick ride to close out the evening. Starting to get quite crisp at night. A little bit chilly not having a coat today. Some deer back there in the middle of the road. You know, I thought of a pretty decent topic and uh, that's rider fatigue. What are things that cause rider fatigue? Uh, I think the first most is not being well rested. I don't care if you're track riding, uh, single track, trail, street. Uh, if you're not well rested, then you're definitely going to uh, make mistakes. Uh, you're gonna have poor judgment. Another big thing with rider fatigue is the gear that you wear. Um, it's very important to have protective gear. Some people uh, hear the term or use the term at gat, all the gear all the time. And I believe in that, I think that's important. But I also think that including myself, we're all guilty of just taking off of gloves and a t-shirt and helmet. Basically just helmet, what's required. And uh, You know, that's kind of dumb because at any time, at any speed, you can go down and really hurt yourself. But another thing is too, can you have too much gear on or can you have the wrong gear on? You know, if you're riding uh, your dual sport and you got to look cool and you ride like full motocross gear because you're going to hit this little dirt trail between two roads on your evening ride, you know, are you able to, to see, to turn your head freely when you come to stops or crossroads? Um, uh, 
Are you just all around comfortable? Or do you have discomfort from the way your kidney belt rides or the way your chest protector hugs you? Are you dressed too warm? You know, if you're sweating and you need a drink and things like that and it makes you fidgety and fatigued, then uh, your chances of going down are gonna be a lot higher. So yeah, some things to think about, you know? Are you uncomfortable? Do you have discomfort? Do you have things that are creating fatigue? And how much, how little or how, how much fatigue actually causes you harm while riding? No matter what style of riding you're doing. People are gonna, you're gonna go down. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen to me. Um, but definitely do everything you can in your power to prevent that. I mean, obviously, you can't prevent that if someone else is being dumb around you. But as long as you're not the cause, then your chances are a lot better. So, to go with my topic, I was making a stop and turned off the camera a few seconds early. But, I was talking about no matter how prepared you are and not having rider fatigue, you still gotta watch out for the other guy. You gotta watch out for the cars. Uh, back there I stopped at a stop sign, turned the camera off, continued on my ride. Um, and came to a spot where I didn't have to stop but I slowed down a lot because the driver himself did not look like he was paying attention well he took my slowing down as if I was coming to a stop and luckily it didn't turn out bad but had I man I wish I had the camera on still when this happened had I uh, not had my head on a swivel had I been fatigued, um, basically just not paying attention, I had a T-bone the side of this guy's car and it would have hurt pretty bad for me. Um, luckily I was moving, like I said, I was slowing down, so I was moving at a slow rate, but just goes to show you, um, I don't know, what can we do to uh, be seen? I actually saw a like a public service announcement little ad uh, from another country I think it was and they had uh, riders all naked on their bike of all different kinds riding street bikes and cruisers and dirt bikes and dual sports and they were they were completely naked showing it all all the goods and uh, the public service announcement was what do we got to do to be seen because uh, as a naked person rides by, everybody's watching. At least everybody's walking around. I was watching them. But truly, I mean, what do we do? Got to be got to be seen. What do you do to be seen? Comment below and uh, tell me. Do you wear high vis? Uh, do you have reflective tape all over your uh, helmet? And how about is anybody using one of those? Uh, I've seen them come on some of the newer bikes now. These new tail lights that. Uh, strobe slow to fast to solid um, so they they as you slow down or apply light brake brake pressure uh, they flash they strobe slowly and the harder you stop the more they strobe and then as you're coming to a stop your your tail light finally um, comes to a solid light fills up solid so I don't know, I've been thinking about one of those Personally, I try to wear bright colors. Sometimes I wear high vis if I'm I know I'm gonna be riding in the dark dark. Uh, also I actually um, 
flick my brake lever, I guess the way you could say it, to purposely flicker my tail light prior to slowing down. Learned that in um, the riding course for getting my endorsement. So yeah, again, ride safe, rubber side down. Rescue airs out.